Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we are going to be talking about Manifest Destiny and the California Gold Rush. As a result of its quick victory in the Mexican-American War, the United States finally achieved the expansionist goal of Manifest Destiny. Yet, the long-term effects of the war served to highlight growing differences between North and South and set the stage for future conflict. Realizing Manifest Destiny the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, shown here, ended the Mexican-American War. Under the treaty, the United States gained vast new territories in exchange for a large lump payment to Mexico. So at the end of the Mexican-American War, due to this treaty, America is going to get vast, vast amounts of land added to the country, and they have to make one large payment to Mexico for these lands. In return for leaving Mexico City and paying $15 million, the United States kept New Mexico and California. The nation also secured the Rio Grande as the southern border of Texas. The treaty angered the Mexican people, who bitterly resented the outcome of the war for decades. The treaty also dismayed Polk, but for a different reason. After Scott captured Mexico City, the, Mex the president decided that he wanted to keep more of Mexico. He blamed his negotiator, Nicholas Trist, for settling for too little, but Polk had no choice but to submit the treaty to Congress because northern public opinion sh would not support a longer war. So at the end of the Mexican-American War, Polk was actually displeased with the outcome of the war because he thought that he should have gotten more land from Mexico for the end of, at the end of the war. But Polk di couldn't really push the issue too much because he knew that he would not have the support of enough of Congress to push for a longer war to push for more land. So he accepted what he got. The Gadsden Purchase In the Gadsden Purchase of 1853, the United States obtained from Mexico another 29,640 square miles in southern Arizona and New Mexico. The Americans bought this strip to facilitate the building of a railroad across the continent. Along with the annexation of Texas, the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo and the Gadsden Purchase increased the area of the United States by about one-third. Only the Louisiana Purchase had added more territory. The new lands compromised present-day New Mexico, California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, and half of Colorado. So this is a vast, vast amount of land that we're talking about here. You know, this is a lot of land that is added to the United States for what is, I think, a pretty small sum of money, 15 million for what all they get. And as we're going to as we're about to see here very shortly, this area of land is going to make the United States a lot of money. Wilmot Proviso. Even before the war ended, the consequences of gaining land from Mexico stirred fierce debate in the United States. In 1846, Whig Congressman David Wilmot of Pennsylvania had proposed a law known as the Wilmot Proviso that would ban slavery in any lands won from Mexico. Now, if we think back to our previous uh, lessons that we had, in Mexico, slavery was banned. There were no slaves in Mexico. So, by keeping this Wilmot Proviso in place, by putting this in place so that slavery would stay illegal, uh, you know, we're not, they wouldn't be changing the laws in those lands. The proposal broke party unity and instead divided Congress largely along sectional lines. Most Northern Democrats joined all Northern Whigs to support the Wilmot Proviso. Southern Democrats joined Southern Whigs in opposition. The Proviso passed in the House of Representatives, but it failed narrowly in the Senate. Now, what's unusual about this is that whenever there is a division in the Senate or the House of Representatives, it's usually along party lines. You know, um, if one party is for it, the other party would be against it or something like that. Um, this is unusual because it wasn't that. If you were from the north and you it didn't matter what party you were on if you were on the north most likely you were against slavery so you were for this and if you were from the south it was the opposite you were probably in favor of keeping slavery so you were going to be against this you know this is it's unusual to see a law or a provision put forth that would divide um, party unity like this law did 
the California Gold Rush. To most Americans, the new lands in the West seemed too distant for rapid settlement, but in early 1848, workers at John Sutter's sawmill found flecks of gold in the American River east of Sacramento, California. Gold Seekers Head to California By summer, news of the gold strike caused a sensation in the eastern United States. In a mass migration known as the California Gold Rush, some 80,000 fortune seekers headed for California in search of easy riches. This mass migration grew particularly strong in 1849. About half of these 49ers traveled by land trails. Another half went by ship around South America or via a short land passage at the Isthmus of Panama. The ship's destination was San Francisco. The Golden News also attracted miners from around the Pacific Rim. Many fortune seekers came from South America, especially Peru and Chile. Another 25,000 laborers migrated from China to California during the 1850s. From a mere 14,000 in 1847, California's population of settlers surged to 225,000 in just five years. And that is a massive amount of people to come to an area in such a short amount of time. You know, just five years to get 225,000 new settlers, that is unheard of until this time. Now, if you're a football fan, if we're talking about San Francisco, and we're talking about these 49ers, it might sound a little familiar to you. Yes, this is where the San Francisco 49ers get their team name from. Okay, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, if you have any questions, you know all the normal ways that you can get a hold of me by email, by comment, through Schoology. Uh, just let me know, and I will do what I can to answer your question. Okay, guys, I hope you're all having a great day, and I'll see you again real soon.